Hi, my name is Sarah Mulligan from 360 Works, and I'm here today to demonstrate Mirror Sync, 360 Works' new FileMaker synchronization tool. I've got here a contact management database loaded up on FileMaker server, and I'm accessing it from FileMaker Pro and entering some data. Which all is great, but what if I want to take this database with me offline, or where a connection would be very slow, on my laptop, iPad, or iPhone? Well, the solution to that is Mirror Sync. Mirror Sync will take your databases with you wherever you go and keep them all synchronized. So I'm just going to show you how easy it is to get this set up and installed. I'm on my server here, and I'm going to run the Mac installer. This is included in the download. I just select Install, and now I set a username and password for MirrorSync. This does not need to match anything you've already got as a credential. We're going to use this to just exclusively mirror administer MirrorSync. Now a message shows installation successful. So we're going to configure our synchronization now by opening up the Safari window and browsing to our server name slash mirror sync. From here, I'm going to launch the client. This client is web-based, so we can change the configuration and add synchronizations from any computer that has the appropriate access. Next, we're going to tell mirror sync a little about the database we want to take remotely. We tell mirror sync the server address, the username and password we've just created, and log in. Now, this is the main mirror sync screen. This is going to show us all the syncs that we've already got ready, it's going to show us a diagram of what those databases look like. It's also going to show us down here a little server message about what MirrorSync is doing. So I'm going to create a new synchronization and just make a few selections based on what my solution looks like. I want a bi-directional sync. We also do one-way syncs. And I have sequential primary keys in mind. We also support UUIDs, which are new in FileMaker 12. I'm also going to select them all backed up because remember, synchronization can destroy your data. For a simple to use backup solution, we recommend SafetyNet. Next, I'm going to enter in information for the database that's on the server. That includes the host name, the credentials, and here I select the database, Contact Management. Let's choose Next. Now we need to select the layouts that we're actually going to use to sync. MirrorSync does things on a per layout basis, and I wanted to tell it exactly which fields to use. So I'm going to create new layouts for all the tables that I want to sync. I've got a contact table and a notes table. So I'm going to create a new layout based on my contact table. I'm going to call it sync contact. I'm going to select all of the fields on the, on the table and finish. Now I'm going to look through this layout and I'm looking for anything that I don't need to sync, anything I don't want to sync, and anything that might slow down the synchronization process. This could be an unstored calculation, or a summary field, or it could be a global. We look for anything that doesn't have this green magnifying glass. See how this one is yellow? That means it's going to be slow to search, so it's also going to be slow to sync. I'm just going to take it out. If you leave these fields in, it's not going to break mirror sync, but it might slow it down. So we really recommend you make all new layouts for this. Now that I've got all green magnifying glasses, I'm going to go over to my second table and create a layout called Sync Notes. And I'm also going to move all the fields over and finish. Now looking at this, this one's good to go. I've got green magnifying glasses on everything, which is perfect. So now I'm going to go back to Mirror Sync. I'm going to refresh the layouts, and Mirror Sync will update the list. I'm just going to move over those two legs that I just made. Hit Next. Now we're going to select primary keys using these drop downs. I'm going to select an ID for my contact and for my notes. I'm also going to select the modification timestamp that's in each table. Now these are the only two fields that you absolutely need to have for mirror sync to work, but chances are you already have them in your solution. Next, this next screen shows us our foreign keys. Since mirror sync keeps track of all your relationships, we need to tell it how tables are related with foreign keys. In my example, notes are related to contacts by using the foreign key ID contact. Simply just use these drop downs to make your selections. When we hit next, we see a diagram of the relationships we just created. Next, we choose and verify the fields that we want to sync. I know these are right since I've done my layouts, but I'm just going to double check them and select next. Now we need to make a few modifications to the solution on the server. All we need to do is just work through these steps by copying a script, a table, and a layout. So first, we're going to copy a table into our solution. So we select this button, and we copy it onto our clipboard. And then I'm going to switch back to FileMaker, 
and go to File, Manage Database, go to the Tables tab, and paste in this MirrorSync table that it needs. Okay. Next, we copy our empty script. So we head back to MirrorSync, we copy the script, and we're back to FileMaker, and we manage scripts and paste it in. Next, we'll copy our layout. FileMaker already made a layout for us when we created that mirror sync table, but we're going to go ahead and replace that, that with a layout we can use to sync. This will display messages about how the synchronization has gone and give us a nice big button so that we can sync when we need to. So I'm just going to select everything and get rid of it. I'm also going to paste in our new elements. Now I'm just going to tidy this up a bit so that it's pretty to look at and save and exit. Back to MirrorSync, we finally copy the script steps themselves. Now based on all those selections we made earlier in the configuration, MirrorSync has dynamically generated a script with all the right field names. So I'm just going to open up my Manage Scripts dialog again and open up our MirrorSync script. And I'm going to select this and just paste in those script steps. If we scroll through this, we can see that these set field steps have all of the table and field names for everything that we want to sync. Finally, we make a copy of the database to come with us. I'm going to enter in my admin console login, and MirrorSync will log into the server, pause the database for us, download a copy, and then open again, so we don't have to use the admin console for anything. Now that I've got a copy to take with me, I've put it on my desktop. You can see the desktop copy on the right and my server copy on the left. Now first, before I do any changes, I've got to link this desktop copy back to the server with MirrorSync. So this is very important. I run the mirror script sync script for the first time. Now I need to enter in my password for the file. This initial sync may take some time, but it's very important. All right. Now it displays a message telling me that I'm in demo mode. Demo mode will work for 24 hours after you've downloaded a copy of the database. After that, to continue using demo mode, you'll need a fresh copy of the database from the server to keep syncing. Now I'm going to make just a couple changes to the copy on my desktop. I'll enter in a phone number or an email or something like that. Let's see. And then I'll run my script for mirror sync. Now, this will check all the records on my local copy, and it will sync them to the server copy. You'll see here, modified one record. If we check the server version, we'll find that that record has also been modified. So now I'm going to use this on my iPad. I've emailed myself a copy of the file, and I'm here in my email, and I click on the attachment. The attachment downloads from Gmail, and I'm going to open up this local copy in FileMaker Go. Now, since this is locally on my iPad, this is going to be really fast. So we open up our contact management database on the iPad. Now remember, this is a fresh copy. This isn't the same copy I was just working with on my desktop. So first and foremost, we need to perform our mirror sync script to set it up for the first time. I'm going to enter in that it's my iPad so that I know which devices are which when I'm looking at it. And it's going to let me know that this is the first time I've synced from this device and that's okay. Next, I need to put in my password for the file. There is none, so I'm just going to click OK. Now, this is going to sync my iPad back to my server. It takes a couple seconds to download the data and make sure that no changes have occurred since I've downloaded this copy. And sync complete. No changes. Perfect. Now, I'm just going to make a couple changes to this database. We'll go to this other record and enter in, let's say, a phone number. And as I'm doing my data entry, I can flip back and forth through records, I can edit things, all with the speed of a local copy. Now I'm just going to perform the mirror sync script again on my iPad. It contacts the server, scans for any changes, and it should show us modified one record. Exactly. Perfect. That's our demonstration on the iPad. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of MirrorSync. For more information, please visit 360works.com slash MirrorSync. For all the latest news on 360works products, like us on Facebook at 360works, or follow us on Twitter at 360works. You may also email us at plugins at 360works.com if you have any questions. 
Thank you and have a nice day.